Live from the Quadigian Capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The News Headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. Reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been solving the country, and we like all their financing. Giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting mission building through its many sponsorships and programs including Financial Literacy Quiz, Pass the Torch Calypso Program, Junior Cooperatives in Secondary Schools, CPEA, and the TAMCC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong This is the GBN Television News for Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. In the headlines, more Molyneux residents told they may have to leave the area. Landlords called on to show compassion toward tenants during coronavirus crisis. Coates Grenada closes one of its main branches. Police say only minor celebrations reported in Guav on Monday evening. In the sports news, tributes continue to pour in for the late Andre the Giant Stewart. And in Around the Globe, police gunfire as protests escalate in Trinidad. Good evening from the Grenada Broadcasting Network. I'm Ken Rogatiste. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Francis Urias Peters. I'm a good listener, and K105 has always been a great source of education and entertainment. Now, while the station name may have changed over the years, it has always provided valuable information which enabled me as a playwright to document and to celebrate our history, our behavior, and our achievements. K105 is my choice, it's the national station. Top story this evening, further on undermining of the Molyneux Road may be pushing more families out of their homes. This, however, is not going down well with some. Christina John has more. More Molyneux families will have to move, but the question they are asking is, where do they move to? Officials from the Ministry of Infrastructure visited the area Monday evening and held talks with some residents. People speaking out, most of whom did not want their faces on camera, say government needs to be clearer when communicating with them. This elderly man, who says he has heart problems, says it scares him to think, after all these years of living in the area, he has to worry about building again. They have me frightened because every day somebody making me heart get bigger and bigger. And, you, you know, and I am not a well man. You see, I suffer so with my heart and every day you come and tell me something, you make it. I don't like to talk much, you know. But you know, so if you have to tell Tom, Dick, and Harry, look, young man, you have to move to go to Greenville. You know fully well you have to go to Greenville. But right away, they, you know, they having me. I would say me alone, you know, everybody here, they have them upside down. Because then telling them the right thing and the right procedure. Arthur Campbell, who can no longer work or walk without support, says cracks develop over time, but blames the movement of heavy equipment as a contributing factor for further undermining of the road. Relocation is out of the question for him. Well, that is a big blow to me, you know, because I, I don't have nowhere else to go. I don't have no land to say land. 
have known that these concrete can be heavy duty vehicle at passing. I believe that's one of the main reasons for the very heavy vehicle. Because when the meat on the side of there is known that it will keep sinking. This resident says the officials met with a few people yesterday but was told they will be back. She is, however, prepared to move if the need arise. If I have to move, I have to move. If it's for safety, mm -hmm. so they don't know soon or rather whatever. They don't know. They just come and tell us about it. But they say they have to come back now to. Speaking to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Marina Jessamy, she explained that their visit was part of continuous monitoring of the area and to advise householders likely to be impacted. A relocation plan is not yet finalized, the permanent secretary says. Therefore, no one was told they have to relocate. Residents who have not received letters will shortly, P.S. Jessamy says, since the situation is not improving. Christina John, GBN News. Minister for Trade, Industry, Cooperatives and Caricom Affairs, Oliver Joseph, says currently the Grenada Cocoa Association and Grenada Cooperative Nutmeg Association are operating at a loss. And as such, the merger between both institutions is needed to keep both organizations alive. Rina Peer has more in this report. With the leak of the draft legislation document of the proposed merger of the Grenada Cocoa and the Grenada Cooperative Nutmeg Associations to the media, many have asked the question, why now and what's the catch? On GBN's Beyond the Headlines last night, Minister for Trade and Cooperatives Oliver Joseph said the two organizations operating independently is not profitable as both entities have been struggling financially over the years. With the the effects of the coronavirus not making things better. He explains that the merger will provide better benefits for the farmers. The GCNA approached government for $3 million. The government decided $1 million will be loaned, $1 million is a grant, $2 million is loan. The Cocoa Association came to government for $2 million. The government decided $1 million in loan, $1 million in grant. It was one association. You know what $5 million to one association would mean? That will make a world of a difference to one association. The farmers must hold the board accountable for their inefficiencies because with the merger is the farmers that will benefit. Because you will save, it is estimated that by coming together in the first year, the savings could be as high as $1 million EC dollars. Elvis Moraine, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, said the suggested merger is no secret, as discussions have been ongoing for years. He said a committee comprised of stakeholders was established, and it was the responsibility of representatives from GCA and GCNA to update the farmers. As I told you earlier, that the board, the, the committee is comprised of representatives from both the GCA and the GCNA. Okay, there is a draft bill, and of course, there is a live document. And what is expected is, I, I would, I would expect, as responsible persons, that the representative from, from either entity would engage. Right. So we knew that 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 was some sort of engagement. As a matter of fact, there is a report coming out of 2017 where the GC took that initiative to engage farmers, and they looked, they had a committee set up. So as I said, it's not a new thing. At present, the draft legislation is at the developmental stage, and there is no set date on when it will be presented to Parliament. For GBN News, I am Rina Peer reporting. Now the news, Health Minister Nicholas Steele says he is contemplating legal action against an individual who claims his business was open beyond curfew hours. This matter was circulated on social media during the last couple of days individual who posted that has a dispute with us um, for services that he provided um, that were not done properly and maliciously posted that and we are in the process of or we are contemplating legal action on the individual, okay, both me personally and the establishment.
Minister Steele says this was a malicious act on the part of the individual who made the post on social media. There is absolutely no way that, that, that on, on that date in question or any of the days that, that my business was open beyond the 7 p.m. closing time. Um, we, had, we were the first restaurant to close even before the government had mandated, and we were the last to open even after the protocols allowed reopening. Well, Grenada on Tuesday welcomed 36 Grenadian cruise ship workers on board MSC Ammonia docked at the Melva Street cruise ship port in uh, St. George. Tourism Minister Dr. Clarice Modest Kerwin says this should be a, uh, the last significant batch of cruise ship workers returning home. We have received some information, one person here, two persons there. Um, most of these persons, the intention is to repatriate them by air, and so they're waiting for certain ports to open and so on. So it is a little bit complicated, but it's not undoable. Therefore, as far as we know, we do not have many to repatriate, but as the situation unfolds, we still keep an open mind. But I believe that we would have today would mark the, the entry of the last significant batch. All right, so all returnees will be tested and placed into mandatory quarantine. Grenada nationals were not the only ones on board. Dr. Modest Cohen also spoke to the government facilitating the repatriation of non-nationals on board the ship via chartered flights through MBIA on Wednesday, the 1st of July. This one is a ship with a, a visit with a, a slight difference in that also on this ship, we have some persons of other nationalities. Usually when that happens, the ship just turns around with those persons and go to wherever the next port of call is. This time, um, they have asked us to allow them to transit those passengers from this port, our cruise ship port, to the airport where they will be taken up by a, um, a charter flight. Um, as far as I understand, there are two chartered flights. There are some seven persons who are going to one or two Caribbean islands. They will be taken by a small charter. And there are others from Latin America, Peru, El Salvador, and um, they will transit through Grenada. Minister Modest Cohen said the non-nationals will not be allowed to leave the cruise ship until Wednesday morning in preparation to leave the island. Courts Grenada has closed one of its main branches in St. George that has served the public for the last seven years. Christina John reports. For the past few weeks, the National Insurance Scheme has had this advert on its online platform. The NIS owns the building from which Coates Unicomer has been operating its Hillsborough Street store. A company official confirmed to GBN Today that it is permanently closing the branch. During the past week, it held a snatch its clearance sale, offering goods at vastly reduced prices. A check today revealed that the store has been cleared of its contents. The Hillsborough Street branch has been serving the public since 2013. GBN understands that as many as 10 Coates employees are being impacted by the closure. There have been reports that the company has had plans to shutter another of its branches. However, a company official told GBN that the Hillsborough branch is the only one identified for closure at this time. Christina John, GBN News. You're watching News at 7. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now more than ever, Flo is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, and your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flow study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlow app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. 
we have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here, even when the future seems unclear. Because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Dear customer, please help us limit the potential impact of COVID-19. If you have cold, flu, or COVID-19 symptoms, please postpone your visit to Greenwich and ask someone you trust to do your business for you. We recommend using online banking to make payments available through Co-op Bank, Republic Bank, and FCIB. You can also use check drop boxes at each of our locations. For bill balances and other information, call 237. For additional support, email customer support at grenlec.com. If you choose to visit, you may have to wait outside because of the social distancing requirements. Our service may be slow, so please be patient with us. Have your account number handy to expedite service. Wishing you, your family, and employees health and wellness at this time. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint job. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. Eminent and Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together. Our superheroes are all among us. They don't wear capes nor have superpowers. In fact, they appear to be quite ordinary. They are the ones who provide us with food. They are our farmers, our grocery store workers, our vendors. They are our fishermen. They are the ones who heal us, our doctors and medical practitioners. They are the ones who protect us, our police officers. They are all the other essential workers who make this period bearable. And how can we forget our teachers, dedicated to educating our children no matter the circumstance? To everyone who is doing their part to make sure the wheel keeps turning. Ariza says, thank you. George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. Email us at grenadasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping. Committed to island life. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Minor celebrations were reported at Gorv on Monday evening. Yesterday, June 29th, was Fisherman's Birthday, a usually festive day in the fishing capital. However, annual celebrations were out of the question this year 
due to regulations brought about by COVID-19. Superintendent of Police Vanny Cohen, head of the Community Relations Department, reported a peaceful night at Guav with only minor hiccups. Well, now we just realized that um, yesterday was the Shaman's birthday, but unfortunately this year um, the celebration could not have been as grand and as festive as it has been over the years. Um, having regard to the fact that we are in, um, we are in a state of emergency, and yet there were a few activities and um, police officers were on the street yesterday. There were a few activities at Gorm that ended in compliance with the curfew. There were just minor incidents um, that was very manageable and was managed by the police. There were two to my um, to my arrest. By and large, we were satisfied with how things went, and we want to thank the public for the cooperation that they have given to us, understanding the constraints that they have. They say not being able to celebrate the way they would have liked to. So I can only wish that next year, God's within 2021, the celebration will be doubled, having a regard to the fact that we could not have had it in 2020, and so 2021 will be a double celebration of Fisherman's Party. On Sunday night, there was an incident resulting in bottles being thrown after police shut down music illegally played during curfew hours, and another during which one female was wounded by a man using a broken bottle. Superintendent Cohen says increased police presence may have had a role to play in the cooperation from the public in the town last evening. Because of the fact that um, we have had some activities at Gov on, on Sunday night, um, illegal activities, I should say, activities that violated the emergency powers regulation, we saw it necessary to um, divert uh, quite a number of resources into the area of Gov. So we have had several police officers from different units on the ground, um, extra extra boots on the ground, extra resources just to ensure that there were compliance and that you know things went well and smoothly and that there were no violence. Um, thanks for the the efforts that we have made and the resources that we have put out, we can safely say that we were able to maintain the peace in a manner that pleases us a lot. And because of those resources, things went as well as it went. So we want to thank the people, we thank the police officers who were there. And um, there were total compliance with the um, coffee regulations. And by nine, the streets were cleared and most of the people were at their home. Additionally, patrol officers from the Rapid Response Unit and Special Services Unit were deployed on the streets to maintain order. The story to report politicians across the Caribbean are being urged to guard their countries against what is commonly known as the Don culture. It's a widely used phrase in Jamaica where criminal and other negative influences dominate community life. NDC caretaker for St. Patrick East, Joseph Andal, says it's imperative that this culture is not allowed to seep into the socio-economic sphere of Caribbean societies. And it needs to be nipped in the bud if it ever raises or rears its ugly head. But because some people have now begun to recognize that poverty can be a good political weapon, they do things to keep people poor and dependent, then those guys who later emerge to be what the Jamaicans call dons or so-called community leaders, they begin to hold sway over communities to threaten and intimidate people. Mr. Andel says it's crucial that people continue to live harmoniously, regardless of the community in which they live. We do not want Grenada to get to the point where if you're living on the Carinage, you can't go Belmont. If you're from Samaritan, you can't go Chantemel. No, 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 no. That is not a road that we want to go. And if you are prepared to do all of those things, to hold on to political power, people of our country have to wise up, open our eyes, and ensure that we do the right thing at the next opportunity. This story to report, as Grenada wraps up Deaf Awareness Month, the misconceptions as they relate to the Deaf community are again being cleared. This year's theme is Bridging the Gap Between the Deaf and Hearing Through Education and Community Outreach. We get more in this report. Guidance and counseling officer in the Ministry of Education, Kathy Dubisset, says one of the major misconceptions affecting the deaf community is a lack of understanding as to what deafness is. 
She says deafness is mixed up with other disabilities, as people believe a deaf person is limited in understanding or education and cannot do things normal people can. And so I find sometimes people are surprised that they can read, they can write, they can work. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest problem I would say that deaf would have with the community. Ms. Dubisset notes that getting people to understand and appreciate the capabilities of a deaf person has been slowed by a lack of adaptability despite Deaf Awareness Month. The guidance and counseling officer highlights that sign language is just one of the methods teachers use together with special strategies to communicate with deaf students. For example, we'll be careful as to make ensure we get their attention before we start to speak. You don't just start speaking and you know the person is hard of hearing. They may miss what you're saying. So there are certain things that we know how to communicate with them. We also would use the same devices like the um, computer, laptop, or tablets, or whatever on your phone to find information, to share information with them. Um, we have some assistive devices like the, the FM system. She adds that a deaf person is only limited by their lack of hearing, however, is able to adapt to situations quicker than a normal person. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. All right, this one, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell is pleading with landlords to be a bit more understanding when dealing with tenants with financial difficulties due to the impact of the coronavirus. The plea was also directed to employers and trade union leaders by Prime Minister Mitchell as he delivered a national address on Monday. I therefore make a special appeal here to employers at this time, to trade union leaders and landlords, you are well placed to inspire positivity in this period of crisis as leaders. We urge employers to help ease the burden and allay the fears of the employers in this very critical time. We urge trade union leaders at this time to be more reasonable in their demands and ask landlords and encourage them to be more sensitive to the predicament faced by many tenants, especially those with good track records who are unable to operate their businesses have or have lost their jobs at this time. Eviction should not be preferred course of action at this time. Prime Minister Mitchell said the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic continues to test the resilience of the Grenadian people. Well, President of the Grenada Bar Association, Lisa Taylor, says changes brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic are affecting the conduct of jury trials. Some of the challenges faced in the bar, which include the suspension of jury trials, were expressed by Taylor on GBN's To The Point program on Monday with Blossom Alexis Welch. Jury trials cannot take place at this moment. Uh, a lot of effort is being made with all the relevant parties, including consultation with the bars going on, to see how jury trials may be restarted. I don't think I need to explain the significance of that. She said the suspension of jury trial will affect clients. The fact that we can't have jury trials means that um, those people who um, are on remand and, and, and who want to have their day in court, that has been um, interrupted and that has significant implications for the liberty of the subject. So. As soon as uh, final arrangements are made um, to facilitate the, the holding of jury trials, that obviously will be um, made public. 
All right. Other issues highlighted by Taylor, she said they continue to struggle with facilities for the magistrate's court and the inability to use the online platforms to conduct hearings. This is News at 7. We'll be right back. B. Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Cariku, and Petit Martinique in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy, in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as the house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks, they go draw your plan, they go talk your materials. <laughs> hey man, wait, wait. The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. Esplanade Mall, something for everyone. Go on a shopping spree today and experience some magic. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flow. Now more than ever, Flow is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flow Study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlow app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. The Alliance of Evangelical Churches staged its intervention in St. Patrick on the weekend to give hope to people who may be thinking of committing suicide. As the organization and other groups went through the streets of St. Patrick, a family was mourning the death of a young man who allegedly consumed a poisonous substance days before. We get more in this report. Police say the latest suspected suicide is being investigated. If confirmed, it will be the fourth suicide in two months. The man from St. David reportedly consumed a poisonous substance on June 21st, Father's Day, and was taken to hospital where he was admitted for the past week. Meanwhile, the Alliance of Evangelical Churches held an intervention walk on Sunday in the parish of St. Patrick, where three suicides occurred. The walk and service worked 
head towards offering spiritual and emotional support to people in the community. President of the Alliance of Evangelical Churches, Devon Rache, spoke of the event. It was well received by the community. Comments um, from persons on the ground was that um, these type of events, uh, they would like to see the church do uh, more of this, um, come out and engage the community like we did this weekend. Um, persons also said that they are happy to see the church being able to do this in a united way. Because separate and apart from the evangelical churches, um, we also extended an invitation to the Seventh-day Adventist churches in St. Patrick and the Catholic Church in St. Patrick. We had uh, the priest uh, from the Catholic Church was present, and we gave him the opportunity to pray as well. So people was really happy to see um, that we were able to unite, you know, as the body of Christ in dealing with the situation. All three suicides were committed by young men. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. The Ministry of Agriculture has implemented a pilot project which affords 14 local farmers an opportunity to each cultivate one acre of tissue culture banana plants. We get more in this report. Adhering to the COVID-19 health and safety guidelines, the 14 farmers were separated into two batches and offered lessons on fertilizer application, pest management, such as the management of the MoCo disease, irrigation, land preparation, and others. The training was done at the Maribo Plant Propagation Station and another at Belvedere at Carlton Gurley's Farm. Minister for Agriculture, Yolan Bain Hosford, addressed recipients at a short handover ceremony at the Moran Propagation Station. I hope that you would continue to work close to the Ministry of Agriculture, that you would help to move this banana um, industry forward, develop the production line, the production level, so that we can feed ourselves, we can sustain ourselves, and we don't have to, as um, Mr. Shea said, we don't have to go out of Grenada to get bananas to feed ourselves and to, to keep things going here. Known for its properties, the ministry imported the William variety for injection within local production with the aim of boosting food and nutrition security. Two of the benefiting farmers Claudius Pierre and Ron Alexander said this is a plus for the banana sector. It's a very happy, happy feeling for, for me. The tissue culture is always welcome by us. We got clean plants, uh, plants free of diseases, so that is a plus. So you don't have to worry about the plants getting mocha. So it's 600 plants, so indeed it will be a big push for the banana industry in Grenada. The ministry will establish these 14 acres of bananas with farmers in various agroecological zones zones, middle belt, lower areas, and higher zones. The ministry will keep all the records from this project and do a financial analysis to verify the profitability of the crop. Each farmer received a total of 600 banana plants for propagation, while two acres of the imported variety will be propagated at the plant propagation stations to provide additional planting materials. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. Time now for this evening's GBN Eye Saw compliments Clear Vision Eye Center. A good eye captures all. GBN Eye Saw is brought to you by Clear Vision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight, our ISO reporter submitted video footage from the protest march at Fort Judy on Saturday. A peaceful protest was held after a contractor, Evan Smith, had been beaten by a family in the area. The family has been formally charged. You can send in your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 and our other social media platforms. At Communo, we 
we are adapting to meet the changing needs of our shareholders and members. Times are changing, and with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely. Want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder? No wait time for transactions to update. Voila! Who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment? Not a communal member? You can join our family today by applying online. At Communa, we see you working hard to ensure that you save, invest, and grow. Communal, join us today. This will be the best financial decision you have ever made. My name is Hollis, Mr. Kilamap, and I endorse this message. B. Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Cariku, and Pitti Martin in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox your way to health Ophio.com Sale, sale, sale All the outlets, hotspot outlets You're going to go to the Carnage, the Grenville Or the Sutter's hotspot And you get sales and deals on all items You can get these on potato You can get these on salt fish Onion, garlic, mac toilet paper and we even have the currants and the raisin at ten dollars per pound lowest price island wide so people just come down or go up or go across but just make sure and go to hot spots keeping an eye on the weather this is gbn we've got you covered all right, here's the weather for Grenada, Caracou, and Petit Martinique, valid for tonight and the following three days. Weather tonight, mostly cloudy and windy, with widely scattered moderate to heavy showers and a medium chance of isolated thunder showers. Tonight's minimum temperature, 23 degrees Celsius. Wind east-northeasterly to east-southeasterly at 12 to 22 miles per hour, gusting higher with showers. Seas slight to moderate, waves 3 to 5 feet in open water. Tides high at 11 p.m. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 5.47. The weather on Wednesday, the 1st of July, partly cloudy and windy, becoming cloudy at times with the occasional light to moderate isolated showers, improving overnight.
On Thursday the 2nd, generally fair, windy and hazy. Increasing in cloudiness overnight with light to moderate scattered showers. And on Friday the 3rd, partly cloudy, windy and hazy with light to moderate scattered showers. Stay with us. Sports News next. Hello, sporting fans. The super heavyweight boxer Andre the Giant Stewart is being honored posthumously. He will have his name added to the title of one of the island's major annual boxing tournaments. The annual March 13th boxing extravaganza will now be named Andre Stewart, added to Trevor Twaits. The former national champion died over the weekend in New York. Interim president of the Boxing Association, Johnson St. Louis, says his contribution to the sport was immeasurable. Andrew is a big part of the full team whenever I've been there travel from 1988 to 1995. Whether it was OECS, Tournament in St. Kitts in 1986, which we never won. As you know, we are the champion of OECS boxing. Um, that same year, Andre went with a full squad from Phantom to Super Heavyweight, including Stephen Benjamin and, and the likes of Gat Felix and so on, and Diana. And at that tournament, we left this third in the same year. Andre also participated in Pan, Pan American Games in Mar del Plata in Argentina and a number of regional tournaments between Grenada and Trinidad. According to St. Louis, Stewart died with his dream. Andre was really planning to, after his retirement from the USA, to come to Grenada and open up a boxing gym. And one of his objectives, among others, was to encourage more female boxers into the art of boxing. No doubt he, he would have been motivated by seeing the young 15-year-old form four students from Wesley College winning Grenada first female gold, gold medal at the Caribbean Championship in Guyana just about two years ago. So we will definitely meet him. Now, here's the rest of the sports news with tv 6s James Saunders. Howdy, sport fans. Welcome. And it is cricket that bowls the first over. And the opening day of the four-day match between the West Indian players was, well, that was washed out without a ball being bowled at Old Trafford. The Caribbean side will play England in three test matches starting next month in Southampton. Well, Wendy's player, Nakoma Bonner, is looking forward to making his test debut after only featuring previously for the limited over squad. He was speaking with the media via teleconference after the washout. West Indies batsman Nkrumah Bonner, who has played two T20 internationals, is looking forward to making his test debut if given the chance come July 8th. The 31-year-old has been to England before and is somewhat familiar with the conditions. So what are his goals if selected in the final 11? Well, as I said before, you know, my primary job is to make runs. Um, I'm, I'm not a goal setter. Um, I have a general plan, but I'm not a goal setter per se. I don't want to limit myself. Um, so, you know, I'll go out there each and every day and value my innings and do my best every single day. England are going to be without Joe Root as his wife is expecting their second child. But Bonner says that doesn't mean that the West Indies will have it easy. Well, um, Joe Root is a good player. Um, you know, a great player actually, you know, I've been doing well for England and it's a big loss for them, um, but it doesn't make it easier. Um, it's still test cricket and we still have to go out there and play our best cricket. Playing cricket in England has been tough for the Windies. So what will be the biggest challenge for the Caribbean side on this tour if they want to succeed? Well, um, over the past year, you know, the batting has been struggling. Um, the bowling, you know, has been holding up there enough of, 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 of it. Um, so I think with the batting, 
think it, if we can score the runs and put it on the board, you know, that will give us the best chance of coming out successful on this tour. Bonner has played 69 first-class matches, scoring three centuries and 1950s, but he averages just 27.22. Vinod Naoni, T6 Sport. Following the, the protest. Global Minister for National Security in Trinidad and Tobago, Stuart Young, has announced that the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service has raised its alert level to red amid ongoing protests in Port of Spain. Civilians are protesting over what they call police brutality, following a series of police killings and, most recently, the killing of three young men during an alleged shootout between officers and the men in Morvant. Police say the men were responsible for the murder of Police Constable Alan Mosley on Saturday. Surveillance video from a nearby building showed that the men had surrendered to the police. Here's a report from our sister station, TV6. And that's following the protests across parts of Port of Spain, including George Street, Duncan Street, Piccadilly, Belmont Circular, Oxford Street, Beetham Gardens, and Sea Lots. Now, we're also told of protests in the east of Trinidad, namely at St. Augustine, Mausica, and Maloney. Our team of Ansam Gibbs and Brandon are at the scene, and in a short while, we will share with you some of that coverage. We are coming to you live from the rooftop of the Express Building in downtown Port of Spain. And as you can hear quite clearly, loud sirens as police officers make their way to the various protests happening across the capital city. We literally just heard volleys of gunshots coming from the hills of Lavantil. And as you can see behind me, there are plumes of black smoke rising from the east. At this time, we have reports of protests happening in, in the Beetham, George Street, Duncan Street, in Piccadilly. We even have reports of protests happening in the Belmont area and as far north as Maraval. At this time, the police are just struggling to respond to all the different hubs of activity currently taking place. We even have unconfirmed reports of shots being fired at the ministry, at the, sorry, Attorney General's office located just a short distance from here. Well, the U.S. Embassy advised its citizens in Trinidad to exercise caution in the vicinity of demonstrations and large gatherings. More regional news from TV6. Executive member of a partnership for national unity, APNU, Aubrey Norton, is accusing chairman of CARICOM, Mia Motley, of supporting electoral fraud in Guyana. Norton, who was speaking on the TV6 Morning Edition, said the report submitted by the CARICOM team to the Guyana Elections Commission is riddled with contradictions. Ishijan Mohammed has more in this report. Norton said the CARICOM report is self-contradictory. On the one hand, he said it argued for a total revamp of the GCOM system because it is not geared to manifest the will of the people, then concluded that the elections manifested the will of the people. He further questioned how can it be reasonably credible when thousands of votes were impacted by the absence of documentation. Norton, who played a critical role in the recount process, said that the report by CARICOM is claiming that the recount was merely a numerical one, when in fact that the gazetted order states it is an audit of votes cast. He said it is strange and embarrassing since it was CARICOM who asked for a gazetted order, but in turn violated the very order they were guided by. CARICOM agreed to an order. That order said that we will do this process, reconcile, and then produce credible results. CARICOM, Mia Motley and company, then shifted away from that and wanted to declare the ballots as they were found in the box without reconciliation. If 
the truth hurts? It means that Mia Martin is hurting because she refused to live by the letter and spirit of the order and wanted fraudulent votes to be declared. I think she is hurting terribly. According to Norton, the only report that deals with the recount process in its entirety is the report compiled by the chief elections officer. I would say it is disingenuous for them to argue that Keith Lowenfield is an agent to the government. Keith Lowenfield did not have the power. It is CARICOM, it is the two bodies decided, and Keith Lowenfield was guided by that. Norton also accused the United States, Britain, and Canada of colluding with the PPP to steal the elections. When the PPP was in government, they refused to put a money laundering act in place. They refused to give the DEA an officer so that they can deal with drugs, drug trafficking, and all the illegalities. This government did that. And if the if the diplomatic corps is on the side of law and not lawlessness, they will be with the APNU. We like to talk about Indians and African Guyanese, but there's an 18% Amerindian population in Guyana that must be considered. And we have got to resolve that. Because if you resolve the afro indo and do not resolve the issue with the Amerindian community, then you will only change the form of domination. What we need is a system that allows each and every Guyanese to believe they are part of the system. But the matter remains a contentious issue because the chief executive officer of GCOM, Keith Lewinfield, has invalidated 115,000 of the votes from that recount, which means the APNU remains the government of Guyana. The matter is now before the Caribbean Court of Justice and will be heard on Wednesday. Nisha John Mohammed, TV6 News. Some public health experts say Florida could become the next epicenter of U.S. COVID-19 infections. Now Miami-Dade, Broward and Palm Beach counties are closing the beaches for the 4th of July holiday weekend. A dire warning from one Trump cabinet member. The window is closing for us to take action and get this under control. As 31 states report an increase in new coronavirus cases over the last week, like here in Florida, the state reporting more than 8,500 new cases Sunday after reporting a record high Saturday of more than 9,500 cases. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis blaming recent increases on a quote test dump, a backlog of tests that all came through at the same time. A former CDC director discounted testing as the source of most increases. I can tell you with 100% certainty that in most states where you're seeing an increase, it is a real increase. It is not more tests, it is more spread of the virus. DeSantis conceding that there is reason for concern, particularly in the demographics of the uptick of confirmed cases. Uh, that positivity increase is really being driven uh, by uh, a big increase over the last three weeks in uh, individuals testing positive throughout the state of Florida in younger age groups, particularly 18 uh, to 44. All right, stay with us to remind you of the headlines after this. A reminder of the headlines, more Mali near residents told they may have to leave the area. Landlords called on to show compassion toward tenants during coronavirus crisis. Coates Grenada closes one of its main branches. Police say only minor celebrations reported in Guave on Monday evening. In the sports news, tributes continue to pour in for the late Andre the Giant Stewart. And in Around the Globe, police gunfire as protests escalate in Trinidad. I'm Ken Roy that completes the news. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night.